All right, thank you for staying with Daybreak. This is a chance you have to ask all the questions on Twitter, hashtag Daybreak at Trevor Mbidi at Citizen TV Kenya. We're talking about access to justice. You can ask any question in regards to the access to justice because we have the entire bar and bench represented here as well, all right? That's what they just told me. <laughs> They've separated themselves. Ochiel Dudley is here, Advocate High of the High Court. Thank you for making time. Joey Madeka, Convener Legal Aid and PIL Committee and also Advocate of the High Court. Thank you so much for making time. The judges are also with us here, Honorable Justice Alfred Mabea, Presiding Judge at the Commercial and Tax Division High Court. Thank you for making time. And Honorable Susan Gaki Gitonga, Resident Magistrate Milimani Small Claims Court. Asante for making time as well. Let's go straight into it and uh, Justice Mabea, I'll start with you on this one. Why does it take so long for cases to be concluded? Uh, Trevor, there are several reasons why cases take long. But the first and foremost one I would say is that um, uh, is the incapacity of uh, the judiciary to be able to handle the disputes that uh, present themselves before, uh, before courts. Number one, we have very little personnel. Um, Trevor, in the advanced world, you ha you'll have a judge having uh, one case for a whole week. This morning, if you were to look at uh, the course list that my court, I personally have to deal with, there are about 20 cases. 20 cases within the, the few six hours, it is not possible. So if we have enough number of uh, personnel, talk of judges as well as magistrates, yeah. then we can be in a position probably to handle the to handle the cases, the disputes that come before us. The second one is also lack of resources, infrastructure. We do not have enough courts or courtrooms where we can have even those uh, those judges as well as magistrates if they were to be to be employed. Yeah. And then uh, uh, previously we used to have the issue of um, uh, complicated procedures that. Uh, uh, have to be undertaken so that uh, we can finally be able to deliver the justice that is required. Yeah. So that is the plat Those are the thing. The first three things that uh, make uh, um, uh, make cases to take so long. All right. Yes. Honorable Gitonga, from your perspective, what delays cases, even from your own uh, side? Uh, Trevor, just to echo what judges said, those are the issues that arise. Huh? Yeah. We have a lack of uh, resources, capacity, and also limited courts. But we have tried our best to, to come up with ways in which we can solve this. Like the government now has established small claims court, which has been established in uh, the first one in Milimani's uh, commercial court. Now, the small claims court has been established under the SEC Act, the Small Claims Court Act 2016. And it basically is an informal court to deal with the common monarchy. Yeah. So this actually has increased the capacity and also has uh, allowed us to deal with the case backlog in most cases. Because now we can see that the common monarchy can come to court and also file their claims in court in a very informal procedure. The, the basic, uh, the general principle of the Small Claims Court is uh, to access, access to justice in a simplified procedure, timely disposal of matters, fairness of process, and also in, a, in an expensive method. Yeah. Another, another reason why cases take long is because many people don't have money to facilitate their cases in court. And this is where the, the Small Claims Court comes in, where you do not even need to have legal fees or legal cost implications yeah. because we have very um, inexpensive way of proceeding of, with matters in court. Yeah. Yes. So the small claims court has come up to deal with this issue of why do we have delays? Like right now, since it was established in uh, say, uh, April, it was launched in April 2021, until now, we've managed to clear almost 3,000 cases. 3,000 cases, yes. And um, uh, this has come a long way in ensuring that matters are not delayed in court and anyone can come to court. So in six months, you've cleared 3,000 cases? Yes, almost 3,000 cases. And every day we get people filing over 50, yeah. over 50 matters, yes. Okay. When you say small claims court, what is the capping? Is there a capping, a million below, two million yes, below, yes. five million? Yes, yes, Trevor. So the pecuniary jurisdiction of the court is a million shillings. Okay. So that means we deal with matters below a million shillings, and we have very strict timelines to deal with these matters. Okay. We have 60 days timelines to deal with matters under the small claims court. So by the time you file your claim in court, 
to the time that you get your judgment, yeah. it has to be uh, concluded within 60 days. And this has gone a long way in ensuring that we have dealt with the issue of delays, okay. case delays. Okay. Yes. And also ensuring that the common monanchi, the wanjikos, can access court without the headache of wondering where am I going to get legal fees? Okay. Where do I get legal representation? Because you can actually come to court alone due to the simplicity of procedure, file your own claim in court since we have very simplified uh, forms where you just come and fill okay. your claim. So after you finish that question and answer form, you have finished filing your claim in court. Okay. Yes, I'll and come just, back. Yes. Yeah, I'll come back to that in just a bit. It's very yes. interesting what you bring up. But yes. Ochiel, you are also have also been ad accused of delaying cases deliberately, especially the lawyers and the advocates, by deliberately dragging and making this unnecessarily cumbersome. Is that the situation? Is well, this done deliberately to drag the cases? I've heard that thing said, especially in the context of criminal cases. Yeah that why are co corruption cases taking so long in court? Yeah. And sometimes it's the DPP shooting himself in the foot. He holds in 30 suspects. Each one of them say he has a lawyer each. Those are 30 lawyers. Then if these 30 lawyers fall ill in turn, those are 30 days taken off. And you know the cases are fixed this month and then you have other cases so you give it maybe one or two months away. So those are 30 months of delay yeah. if just one of these lawyers falls ill. But then there's something that Justice Mabea had mentioned about the judiciary being under-resourced. There are not enough personnel. Where there are enough personnel right now and over the last two years, it's because the president has refused to appoint 40 judges. Imagine the impact of 40 judges on the justice system. The Court of Appeal has about 12 or so judges. The President had refused to appoint about eight or so judges to the Court of Appeal, and the Court of Appeal had to come back to Nairobi. Remember, they withdrew cases from Mombasa, Malindi. They closed down the Court of Appeal registries in those areas. Yeah. So I think that's another area that we cannot have this discussion without mentioning. Mm -hmm. And uh, I would just love to mention that Katiba Institute is conducting a study on why cases take long in court, on what is the real cost of justice, yeah. how much do you need to have to get justice, and uh, how many of us can afford this. And then that will also point us in the direction of the legal aid system, yeah. which is not yet fully activated. Okay. Yeah. Joy, you also have experience in this. In your experience, what is the issue and how can it be resolved? Um, thank you so much. So in echoing what my colleague has just mentioned, um, access to justice is not an easy thing. Yeah. So um, this question comes in at a very timely hour when you are having the Legal Awareness Week, which seeks to create awareness about uh, what really happens uh, in the court yeah. and also uh, educating the citizen about um, the law. So. Part of why there is delay is because um, the general citizen do not know where to go in case they have an issue, how to approach it. And again, even engaging the services of a lawyer yeah. are not so cheap in Ken is not so cheap in Kenya. So the costs attached to that and uh, even the processes, the lack of the know-how uh, is a cause of a delay. So with this question, uh, maybe let me tag in uh, that you are having the legal awareness with going yeah. uh, where uh, the LSK Nairobi branch, which I convened for, yeah. is holding uh, legal aid uh, forums in uh, various courts in Nairobi. Yeah. This is the Milimani Law Courts, uh, the Supreme Court, Makadara Law Courts, Kibira Law Courts, um, Kiambu Law Court, and the Thika Law Courts, because um, the LSK Nairobi branch uh, covers the ne Kiambu and Nairobi region. So the courts that are in these uh, two regions, yeah. we are having the Legal Awareness Week, where members of the public can actually walk in and ask the questions that they have concerned with the law. So walk me through this, because I can assure you the first team of people will come there, will, uh, people will, their cases have been delayed <laughs> in court, that I can assure you 100%. They will come and tell you this case has been done since 1991 up until now. So what will you tell them at that point? Um, as the others have just shared, they are very, I mean, each case is unique. 
there's a different reason why each case is being delayed. You can't relate case A to case B. So these are the different, um, this is the forum to come and understand why your case driver is being delayed, why my case is being delayed. So you can't really wholly say yeah. that this specific reason is why all the cases are being delayed. Of course, I acknowledge systemic challenges and technicalities, but uh, each case, I believe each case is unique and there must be a reason why it's being delayed. And this, we can use this forum to approach um, the lawyers who've dedicated their hours to be there yeah. to understand why your case is delayed. <coughs> the other issue that will also come up is the costs. People will talk about that. That's the first thing they'll come and ask you. Well, I'm trying to figure out on this Legal Awareness Week, what are you going to tell them when they ask you about expenses involved? Mm -hmm. Is there some uh, money you're going to subsidize? How is it going to work? Because when they come to you, they'll want solutions. And uh, the first thing they'll ask is, it's too expensive. What do I do? Um, so for the Legal Awareness Week, it's pro bono. We are offering the services. It's the, that part of the year yeah. where all services are being offered for free. There's no charge um, attached. There's no cost attached to that. And um, other than legal advice, uh, drafting uh, the required court papers, yeah. we'll also pick up cases, specific cases that we will handle pro bono. So again, I keep emphasizing that each case is unique. Yeah. And uh, we also work a lot with partnerships. Okay. As LSK, we may not be able to represent you as an individual, but uh, through our various partnerships with government and uh, non-governmental institutions, we'll offer support that is required. Okay. Mm -hmm. Justice Mabea, there's a direct question here from Solomon Kuria, who says, please ask the judges, why is it so easy to jail a chicken thief? and a cut slaughter, yet it is so hard to jail thieves who steal from public coffers. And then he adds another question there, are judges bribed? Um, uh, the answer is simple. It is not so easy to, to convict a chicken thief uh, as opposed to, the, to, the, to those who steal. It is all about the procedures that I spoke about. A chicken thief, number one, will not have a legal representation. He will come and once he's told about, uh, you stole a chicken of your neighbor and you found it, you slaughtered it, he admits, he says, oh yes. Somebody who has stolen uh, from the government and uh, he has all the, 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 the ability to get uh, a battery of lawyers. The lawyers will take the court through all the motions, the right to representation the right to hearing, Article 50, yeah. all that. And the court, while we sit there, the, ma the one thing that you must do, uh, Trevor, is to make sure that you do not prejudice someone's rights. You yeah. have to listen to him and make sure that the law is followed up to the last bit of it. So in the event, yeah. the, the thief, the, 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 the so-called uh, big thief, has lawyers who, have, who are able to poke holes on the case of the DPP, who am I to convict the person? So it is for the DPP to make sure that he has done his right work, uh, the, his, uh, his work right. Yeah. He has the evidence, he presents it properly before the court, before the court reaches what? The, 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 the conclusion, whether or not the person has stolen. Yeah. And the issue of uh, whether judges are, are bribed. Um, uh, let me say that uh, I cannot uh, say that just judges or magistrates are, are bribed, unless there is a case, there is evidence of bribery. Yeah. Yes. I <laughs> like the way you're precise with your answers. <laughs> you know, you mentioned something about the small claims court and uh, informal applications and informal statements. How informal is it? So does it mean that if I have a case that is below a million shillings, I just walk in there and say, Ochiel owes me a million, and that's it? How does it work? Thank you, Trevor. Now, um, you have heard from my, my colleague there that the main headache that most people have is also the drafting of documents and coming to court. Yeah. So by the time you want to come to court, you're thinking, I need to have a lawyer to represent me and also draft these documents because I have no idea how to approach the court. So the Small Claims Court has dealt immensely with that in the sense that we have uploaded uh, forms where you use them to file a claim in court. That means you do not need anyone to draft any document with you. What you need to do is go to the judiciary website, uh, uh, upload those forms or download those forms. There are forms provided under the Small Claims Act Rules 2019. 
and they are in a question and answer format. So by the time, like the, the institution of a statement of claim, that is how you come to court in the small claims court, by filing a statement of claim, that is form number 1A. So you're briefly asked, tell us about yourself, your name, your address, the offending party, briefly explain what you have brought before court and the orders you're seeking. So by this, Trevor, I mean you do not need to have legal representation. So the headache of where am I going to get money to pay an advocate is off. And also uh, another thing is that the costs in the small claims court are very reasonable. For example, now we are dealing with commercial matters below a million shillings. If you file a commercial matter under the small claims court, it is completely free. That means by the time you're filing your claim to the time that you will uh, get judgment, it is free, you will not pay a single cent. Yeah. And as opposed to the other courts, like maybe I give an example of the Chief Magistrate Commercial Court, um, matters which are a million or even over, you get to pay over like 70,000 shillings. So that is a lot for the common mananchi. Yeah. So we also have civil claims which are filed under the small claims court. And these ones are very reasonable. The most you can pay in the small claims court is a thousand shillings. Okay. And that means for a claim which is a million shilling. So basically you'll be paying 200, 100. By this I mean that you will have no cost implication. So the headache of wondering how am I going to pay fees in court does not apply in the small claims court at all at all. So it is important that the public also knows that you are free to come to the small claims court, whether you have legal representation or not, yeah. whether you have money or not, you can still approach the court. And by the time your matter is concluded, in two months' time, you'll, you'll get your judgment. Yeah. Yes. But the implementation of this judgment is also another issue. The court gives an order. Yes. Your GL doesn't pay me back. So what happens? <laughs> So <laughs> by that we mean those are execution proceedings. Now you yeah. can come to court and say that the court gave this order and uh, the defendant has not paid after a decree has been extracted. Yeah. So execution proceedings actually in the small claims court, we hurry up from the moment you deliver judgment to the moment you get your judgment, we actually follow up. And even if you come back to court for execution proceedings, there are no, char there, there are no charges implications. Yeah. So there is no headache of wondering how am I going to follow up with this guy. Yes. Okay. Yes. So you've cleared 3,000 cases in six months between yes. April 2021 and now. Yeah, I wrote, yeah. But how many are you looking to clear then? How many, what is the backlog like? What are you, how many are you dealing uh, with? The backlog thing? now we are at less than 1,000, less than 1,000, I will say like 800. Okay. And that is because everyone has now rushed to the small claims court. Like per day we will have like 50 matters filed under the small claims court and we only have uh, five adjudicators. Yeah. The court is presided over by adjudicators. But to cap this, the judiciary is hiring and we are looking to get more adjudicators in the small claims court. So by the time uh, in November since we are looking to get more adjudicators and also the small claims court will be rolled out to yeah. other counties okay. the backlog will not be an issue okay yes oh, Chiel, you had mentioned this issue of uh, the 40 judges not having been appointed but is this an issue of personnel or infrastructure because even if you have the personnel where will they sit well I hear that question and I wanted to draw your attention for example to the BBI proceedings the judges were not writing if they were writing, they were just taking small notes, like Trevor said this or that advocate said this. The bulk of their work was being done in the background yeah. by transcribers. Now, if you go to court today, you'll find judges taking notes, everything you say, because especially the high court, it's a court of record. So everything that you say in submission is written by the judge. If you make a mistake and say, sorry, my lord, then your lord has to go back and correct that mistake in writing. I think if we empowered the judiciary to have transcribers, especially now that proceedings are virtual, as you are speaking, the system is recording. If they can just extract the transcript from that, I think it would hasten. <coughs> because when you're appealing, then you have to wait for what the judge wrote. Someone has to manually check and correct it, takes a number of months, yeah. then eventually file your appeal. So it's a question of infrastructure, but there's also the personnel question, which is a refusal to appoint for a long time 40 judges. And the impact, I think we're yet to see the impact of that. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I, I want to hear more about this issue of the legal awareness. 
and how exactly it works. And over the years, and I know you've done this before, what sort of issues have come up and how have they been addressed in the long run? Because there's also the risk of people telling you exactly the same issues every other time and nothing happens. What are the most common issues that have come up and how have they been addressed? Okay. So uh, this runs annually, uh, the Legal Aid Awareness Week, but uh, it's run by a committee. Under the LSK Nairobi branch, we have committees in its structure, and there's the Legal Aid and Public Interest <coughs> Litigation <coughs> Committee for which I convene. So it's not a matter of uh, just this week that we are having the services provided to the public. The committee runs year in, year out, meaning that uh, if a member of public had an issue, and it's not even um, during the Legal Awareness Week, they still access uh, the services. So I wouldn't really point on which specific cases are there, because the way it's organized, that um, lawyers in different uh, areas of practice. Yeah. For example, personally, I am more into children and the law. So depending on who comes to my desk, that's how I'll be able to classify. When you look at now what I just mentioned, yeah. most of the cases are definitely on custody, maintenance, such cases. But we receive all manner of cases from uh, criminal to civil cases. Yeah. yeah. And this is just not only in Nairobi. As I mentioned, it's happened also in Kiambu. Okay. And it doesn't just happen during the uh, Awareness Week. Yeah. It runs all through. You can still access the services even beyond this legal awareness week. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Ochiel, is there corruption in the legal system from where you stand? From the bar? Both sides, from the bar and the bench. Well, maybe there is, but I haven't encountered it myself. Even facilitation in terms of moving the papers around? Because this is the one thing that everybody always complains about, and how can it be tamed? And I like the uh, idea that you took in terms of going digital, so yeah. that there are no files that are missing left, right, and center. Once it's there, there will always be a footprint. <laughs> Somebody deleted it, we know who deleted it. Okay. I, I think the move to virtual filing and things like that have should have resolved that kind of issue. Yeah. Yeah, if it was there. Because now there's limited interaction with registry personnel, for example. If you have a case, you put it in the system. <coughs> the system tells you how much you should pay yeah. and where you should pay it to. Okay. Yeah. Justice Mabe, why can't we just have timelines for everything? Because they have timelines for 60 days. Yes. We can you just agree that this is it. And if it goes beyond this, this case is either thrown out or we rule on it, period. Yes. Uh, before I answer that, let me go back to the, uh, when I finished my, my previous answer, you said I was so, so. To, to the point. <laughs> <laughs> yes. What thing, Trevor, that you have to understand on the issue of so-called bribery and corruption, eh? The issue of deciding disputes is not an easy thing. Yeah. Here you have two combatants, and always you must have a loser. There must be a loser. It's a winner and a loser scenario. Whoever, in most cases, when somebody loses, yeah. he has to get a hold and a scapegoat. And the scapegoat is that probably the judge or the magistrate was reached. Uh, it is no other than uh, the Chief Justice who has said, and it is a fact that uh, where there is an act of corruption, she has said she will deal with it strictly and effectively. And the JIC, uh, which uh, deals with the issues of disciplinary issues from all the way from the, from the high court all the way to the, to the, uh, to the magistrates, has been doing all this. Yeah. So that where there is any semblance of uh, 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 evidence that there has been corruption or something like that, yeah. there, are, there, are, there, are, there, are, there are structures which have been put to address that. Now to come to your question about um, why there are no timelines. Yeah. Uh, I'll go back, f uh, still back to the issue of uh, when we talk about, uh, like, right now let me talk about uh, an example of having, f uh, we about uh, 79, no, uh, with, the, with the elevation of about six, about eight, we about uh, 70 high court judges. Yeah. <coughs> 70 high court judges, if you divide that to about 150,000 cases that are pending. That gives you roughly about 1,000 plus cases for each and every judge. Yeah. If you divide that into, for example, the number of uh, days we have in a year, how many cases will you deal in a, uh, with in a year? One case which has probably, give a minimum of four, four witnesses. Yeah. A witness will take how long in a, to give evidence? A minimum of one hour. So in a day, how many witnesses will you, uh, will you listen to? 
probably four or five. Yeah. So where there is efficiency, it is most unlikely that even that one case you can hear it in one day, unless it has a maximum of three, three witnesses. So if you give yourself timelines, of which we try, yeah. the only place which the judiciary is tried through the law is uh, the number of days that you, a judge or a magistrate can take to deliver a decision. 60 days. Yeah. But for the hearing, we have not yet reached there because we have complicated cases. Uh, if I give an example in the criminal process, it is not the court which has, it's not only the court which has what? The mandate <coughs> running there. The case starts from the police station yeah. where there is uh, investigations. So the police will prepare, will do the investigations, prepare the statements, prepare everything and then hand it over to the, to the DPP. Yeah. When someone is already charged and you find that <coughs> probably there they are, they are loopholes and they have not taken enough uh, probably uh, statements, the DPP goes back to the police yeah. to add up. That is the delay. When it comes to us, when uh, the matter has come uh, before court, if the DPP comes asking for more time, he needs to reach uh, a witness who is in Kajiado and uh, the case is in, in, in Miriman, what do you do? You, do, not, you, do, you cannot dismiss the case because if you dismiss, the complainant will suffer. Yeah. So you have to give what? So because, and he has told you about a lawyer may come, he's unwell, yeah. he's representing the accused. The complainant thinks that, oh no, the accused is doing what? He's dragging the feet. Yeah. But the court, yeah. so for uh, putting timelines is not, uh, we've tried because uh, through uh, parliament, uh, for example, the cases for uh, the, the, the ones which go through the tender system. Yeah. So when they come before the, the judicial review uh, uh, division of the high court, that court has about only 45 days to, to make a decision. And how many judges do we have? Only two. Mm. How many cases do we have? Thousands of them. So you can imagine. Yeah. People, people work throughout the day and the night <laughs> to be able to come with those decisions. Okay. So it's not, it's not very, very plausible to put <coughs> timelines where resources, especially human resource, is very, 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 very limited. I, I've just told you that uh, in Canada or in America, you as a judge, you are given, you know that next week, Judge Mabea, you are going to deal with this case. Yeah. So you start from Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, then you reserve it for another four or five days to write what? The decision. Yeah. Unlike here, where we have only 100 and, a maximum 130, 140 judges. Yeah. Where you have about four, three, three, three hundred thousand cases. Yeah. Like today, you mentioned that you have more than 20 cases yes. for today. Yes. That it definitely will not finish today. Of course. Yeah. So the ones which co proceed for hearing are probably, uh, well, I've seen in the course list, I have three for hearing. Yeah. That is where the witness will have to come. Yeah. So the maximum witness I can hear is only about three. Okay. Because if you start at nine and break at one and then at two to three, yeah. these are only four hours in a, in a day. In a day. Yes. So ideally, how many cases should you have? Uh, in a, in um, uh, per day, per day, yeah. have one hearing. Yeah. Have one or uh, have a maximum of two or three applications, okay. and probably three other matters to give directions on what is to be done. Okay. That one can effectively move the hearing of the cases and conclusions. All right. But if we did that, uh, Trevor. <coughs> If you come today and file your case and application, in the commercial division, we are only six judges. Yeah. And uh, if, if only one case will be, will be uh, uh, listed, eh? yeah. I have now 5,360 5, cases. How long will these cases take to, be, to come on the cost list? The one of 5,000 will come after three or four years. Yeah. That's the delay. So that is why probably we put at least, we try and put three, four, three, four, so that at least butters can, there is a bring up system. And yeah. we can see the ones which can be settled, the ones which, which, which uh, parties will fight to the bitter end. Yeah. And we move on. So but this can easily be resolved if we just throw in the numbers, have more judges. <coughs> that is, the, that is that, that's the first of the foundation, has throw in capacity. Yeah. The constitution talks about 200. We are 70. Okay. Do you see the, There's the, the limit? And 30 gap. The drafters of uh, the constitution had in mind and knew that. Uh, uh, the other thing that I will tell you, I will point out, is that after the 2010 constitution, 
because of the faith the judiciary has built in the Kenyans, the number of cases people run to court because that is where they see hope yeah. to sort out what their disputes. Okay. Yes. Gitonga, there's another question here from and it's a statement. Jacob Abere Matlala. He says, ask the panelists, there's this phrase that in Kenya it's easy to buy a judge than hire a lawyer. What is their take, knowing that we have been seeing big cases involving killing or even stealing by high-end clients delaying? It's still on the issue of corruption. <laughs> yes. Just to echo, uh, Trevor, what judge has said. Um, in a, when you hear a matter, there's always a winner yeah. and a loser. Mm -hmm. And let me tell you the truth. If you lose a case, you will look for a reason why you have lost that case. So most of these complaints we have are not actually genuine. It's a party who feels like, why did, my, why did the judge or the magistrate decide my case in this way? And um, just as um, also judge has said, yeah. if you have evidence, because you're saying that it is easy to bribe a judge or a magistrate yeah. than to hire a lawyer, then you should bring evidence. It's, it shouldn't be a matter of someone who's bribed. Yeah. It should be a matter of evidence so that we don't taint the, the bench in a bad light yeah. and the way the bench is actually trying so hard yeah. to ensure that the common monainchi and everyone else is, accesses justice. Yeah. Um, just to, <laughs> I, I have had a judge mention that um, in his cost list, maybe he has, normally has 20. Uh, for me and most magistrates, if you have 20, that is such a good day. You just come to the office smiling because that is such a good day. We don't have 20 matters. We have 40, 60 matters like um, judicial officers uh, in the chief magistrate commercial court. On, on almost every day you have to deal with over 50 matters. Yeah. So sometimes it, is, it, is, it feels bad that someone will just want to taint the bench or the judiciary in a bad light and yeah. you don't want to see the effort yeah. that the judicial officers are putting to ensure that justice is delivered to yeah. to everyone. So I, I, don't, um, I don't agree that it is, uh, of course, that phrase. <laughs> <laughs> I totally do not agree with that. I don't, I don't yeah. agree with that. I would actually wish that most of uh, the Kenyans and most common Mananchi will look at the work judicial officers are yeah. doing in yeah. limited capacity. Yeah. Actually, like um, in our matters, like the adjudicators even in small claims court, we can hear even five to ten cases in a day uh, Trevor, you have to go through your cost list. You have to hear witnesses. Sometimes you come with three or more witnesses. And you still have to sit down and write a reasonable judgment. Yeah. So basically, uh, you give your life to the people. And yeah. uh, <laughs> uh, what they seem to see is the bad things yes. we are doing. No one is actually <laughs> seeing the sacrifices yeah. that judicial officers are actually putting. Yes. You yeah, like the media. Yeah. Yeah. Trevor, it doesn't matter what you do, people will always say something bad. Trevor, yeah, yeah, just yeah. <laughs> if I may add on uh, what she has said, yeah. uh, the comment you made was that uh, you see some other cases uh, taking forever. Yeah. And uh, um, I don't have an example uh, which they may have in mind. But uh, of late, you've seen uh, uh, the, uh, the, the courts handing down real judgments, corrupt people getting the... The, the, the justice that is required. Yeah. That is where the proper evidence has been presented pain, painfully by the DPP before the court, and the court finds that the cases have been proved. Yeah. What if the uh, case is not proved? The first thing as a judicial officer, you swore by the Bible or the Quran or the Gita yeah. that you will do justice without fear or favor. And because you are swearing to your God, you will not want to throw somebody into jail just because you want to please. No, it is the law and the evidence. Yeah. That is what leads yeah. the judges and the magistrates. Are you sometimes disappointed by the evidence that you see? Because other, there's, there's a difference for you. There's hearsay and then there's evidence that is before you. Sometimes the court of public opinion is way strong and you know that this case, most likely, what they've said is true, but the evidence I have is not enough to convict. Thank you. Uh, for me, I will not uh, uh, go by the, the, the public court of opinion. Eh? Yeah. I will go by the evidence, that the hard evidence that has been presented because uh, I'm not the last court of uh, record. Yeah. The court of appeal is there and the Supreme Court. Yeah. I must convince myself and my conscience that the decision of me I'm making is right. 
Even if I saw probably the DPP is uh, going out of his way, I as a court am not supposed to help him. I'm not supposed to tell him, no, no, that evidence will not help you take this evidence. No. I am an, an impartial umpire. Yeah. It is for him to put his case, the lawyer to, uh, to either rebut or uh, poke holes if it is poked, and in accordance with the evidence and the yeah. pr procedures, with the law, I make a determination. Okay. This is where people don't understand, mm. that it is a science. When, if you go through the judgments, the decisions, you talked about writing wrong judgments, you have to reason so that when it goes out there, somebody can see, oh yes, there was a reason why the court reached at this decision. Okay. Yes. Yeah, you already yeah. got something. Yeah. Um, just to add to that, of course, sometimes you will experience frustration, like uh, personally, before I joined the judiciary, I was a prosecutor. Yeah. And when I was prosecuting matters, there are times where you will feel frustrated because you know what evidence is supposed to be placed before court, yeah. because you know that for a matter to be decided by a magistrate or a judge, there are certain thresholds of evidence that you should meet. So if these thresholds are not met, maybe during the investigation process, of course the case will fail. Uh, just as judge has said, what we consider is the evidence before us. We do not, uh, we, we cannot investigate for you, especially in criminal matters. Yeah. We cannot investigate for you because there's an investigative agency and those are investigators. Yeah. But the beauty with the small claims court for the common monanchi is that the court proceeds in an inquisitorial mode in the sense that when I'm hearing a matter and according to me, I feel like uh, if this witness is brought or if this document is brought, it will assist the court to make an informative decision. Yeah. I can do that. I can do that. But that only applies to the small claims court because we have relaxed rules of procedure and we are accommodative to the common monanchi. It's like caught in a kusa idea yeah. because we want to at the end of the day we want you to access justice we want to deliver what is just to you yeah. so i can actually uh, compel a party to come to court one who was not a witness before or a document to be brought yeah. so that the court can make an informative decision okay. but it doesn't apply to criminal matters and also other matters where uh, the judge and the judicial officers have to consider the evidence. You cannot take up an investigative role because you also have to be impartial. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes. That's from the benches. So let's hear the bar now. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's from the benches. Yeah. From the bar side, I, yes, I'd acknowledge that there are instances where it's uh, the advocate who's at fault. Yeah. So we've had complaints about uh, advocates uh, being bribed advocates not doing what they're supposed to do, having sworn, as we've been told. Yeah. And uh, we have um, redresses. We have the uh, Advocates Complaints Commission. Yeah. We have the Advocates Disciplinary <coughs> Committee. And even during, again, I really want to speak about this legal awareness week. Any yeah. issues that will come out from this awareness week about uh, uh, an, ad an advocate not behaving in a professional manner will yeah. be forwarded to the bar bench committees. So in as much as there may be frustrations from the bench, I acknowledge that there are frustrations that um, arise from we advocates. And uh, if there are members of public who have complaints against a certain advocate, we welcome you to um, formally launch your, uh, your complaints through the three shared avenues, ongoing legal awareness clinics, yeah. Nairobi and Kiambu, um, through the Advocates Complaints Commission. Actually, this. Um, the procedure is quite simple. It's a template, a form you fill. You attach, again, evidence. It's about evidence. Yeah. Uh, ours is adversarial. You have to prove what you're saying. So you fill the form, fill the details, and the advocate will definitely be contacted, yeah. asked about his side of the story, and it proceeds on just to ensure access um, to justice for everybody. So don't sit back at home just saying, yeah, advocates are corrupt, judges are corrupt. I mean, you have to tender your evidence, and the avenues are there. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. Trevor, just shifting the gears to another area, I think the judiciary is doing much more than our colleagues are saying. They have the mediation system, which they've now mainstreamed. Yeah. So if some cases can be resolved, you are not too hostile to each other. You take it to mediation, and instead of lasting five years in the courts, yeah. the matter is resolved. Then these cases we are talking about, a judiciary study showed that they're just 95% 
sorry, they just five percent come to the yeah, former system. Yes, ninety-five percent. Yes, yes. All of them. Ninety-five percent <laughs> go out there. Yeah. And there's a time I think we misunderstood Chief Justice William Mutunga when he said, you know, which doctors? I think it meant these traditional leaders. Yeah. He was talking about the informal justice system. I think the CJ Kome launched something a week ago yeah. on the alternative justice system. Mm. Because a lot of these cases, the boundary disputes, maintenance, they, de they don't get to the courts. They get resolved by elders, you know, at the local level. And that's another area that might need to be strengthened yeah. so that you can access justice near you. Okay. Because some of these really work and work well. Yeah. yeah. Joy, I'd like to hear your views on something that has always come up by the, in the legal streets from the LSK perspective. Why is it so hard to just cap how much a case should cost, especially on the legal fees? Because it seems, it depends. I mean, Ochil Dudley feels is a high-end lawyer, his legal fee for the same case is different from Trevor who's just starting out. Why don't we have a capping that we know? Like x-rays, for example, you know an x-ray is this much. I couldn't in the left or right. Because Kenyans are always wondering, we don't know what to pay. Okay. For some people, the hotshot lawyers, it's so expensive. For others, it is not. Okay. I'll use the example that you give about an X-ray. An X-ray in Kenyatta National Hospital will not cost the same much in Aga Khan. You'll maybe pay, if it's an ultrasound, you'll pay probably 1200 in Kenyatta, if at all you're paying. But in Aga Khan, you, you'll have to cough up something much. So we have the advocate's remuneration order where well, each um, stipulates the minimums that you can charge. We have something called undercutting, which is uh, professional mis uh, misconduct. So where an advocate cannot charge less than this. So there's a minimum, but there's a maximum. minimum, but there's no maximum. Yeah, so. And you don't have a problem with that? <laughs> well, personally, no. I really do not have a problem with that. <laughs> because, I mean, we are around, um, how many lawyers? We're around 20,000. No, 18,000, 17,000 active lawyers. Yeah. All of us cannot be charging, uh, I don't want to call it exorbitant because it's value. I mean, before I charge what I charge, there must be a reason. And but, again, sorry? No, no, but in service of the people, I feel like this is a bit unfair. <laughs> uh, because then if my mother in the village has a case, she would definitely go for the person she can afford. Are we then saying that this is of lesser quality as opposed to her sending me, her son, to go and find a chiel, for example? And that's why we have the law society having the public interest litigation, legal aid and public interest litigation committees, both at the national office and the branch level. So in case you're there and you're not able to afford an advocate, we always have a way out. We, as I said, we work in partnership with other, um, other advocates, other institutions, and uh, for sure, for sure, you'll access justice if you really know the resources. And one thing that the greatest challenge is actually lack of knowledge. Advocates are there, yes, costly ones, but again, there's also free legal aid, not only through the legal aid um, public interest litigation committees. Um, in my space of work, I know about the National Gender and Equality Commission that has uh, lawyers who carry out uh, gender-related cases for free. We have FIDA. Yeah. We have uh, organizations such as Kenya Alliance for the Advancement of Children. There are so many institutions, though working in silos, that are providing legal aid yeah. for free. Okay. Yeah, so, so legal aid is there, but the information, the knowledge is not out there, just how and where to access it. Okay, so we just need to streamline it. To stream, one, to streamline it, yeah. and also create awareness about uh, where these services are available. How can you access? Because it's one thing, me sitting down and saying, I enjoy offer pro bono services to maybe the specific cases. But again, someone in the village where I come from doesn't have contact to Joy. So maybe just uh, uh, having the information trickle down to those yeah. people who need it most. All right. Yeah. 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 Allow, allow me to jump in on that. The truth of life is that those who need a lawyer the most oftentimes are the ones who can't afford it. And so there's that imbalance. You need it, you can't get it. Yeah. And in some other countries, for example, they compel lawyers to take at least one pro bono point. And pro bono doesn't mean free. It means for the good, for the public good. So you can do a case pro bono, but you get some reimbursement for your time for it. Yeah. It doesn't necessarily mean free. Maybe. 
in which uh, we as could agree yeah. to just attach one pro bono case to your points to qualify to practice for the next year. Yeah. It can be voluntary to start with. You take a case, pro bono, you do it, you finish it, you get one point so that we mainstream this. But then there's also need to look at the legal aid system. We have a legal aid act. I'm not sure we fully operationalized it. Sometimes you go to court, it's a children's court, for example, and you find children in conflict with the law still, you know, standing there alone and represented. Yeah. Th that's an area that we really need to look at. Okay. Yeah. I'll take a quick break here. When you come back, there's a lot of questions here that I'll pose to the judges again. <laughs> <laughs> All right. See you in